Hi everybody, welcome, it's Chris Petrie. We're having some more fun here, we're doing watercolors, and as you know, we like to change up our subject matter every week, so sometimes we're doing flowers, sometimes we're doing landscapes and seascapes like this, and beach scenes. I hope you enjoy it all. I always say, please watch the videos that maybe aren't your favorites, but you'll still learn a lot of information by just watching and hearing all of the terminology we use, all of the methods and techniques we use in watercolor, you'll learn those valuable uh, insights of methods and techniques as well as the supplies that we use, the paints, the colors, some of the subtle things of watercolor. So always stay with us, keep sticking uh, with us each week, even if you're not so happy with maybe some of the subject matter. Some of you, again, may not love water, you know, um, beach scenes or seascapes like this. No problem. We're going to be doing a flower painting soon or a figure painting soon, you know, within a couple of weeks or so. We're always changing and doing all your favorites all the time here on this channel. So you'll always get lots of great videos to your liking. And you can also go back in my archives on YouTube. I have over 300 videos in my archives. You can watch 10, 20 flower painting videos if you want, or 10 or 20 seascapes if you want, or 10 or 20 figure paintings videos if you want. They're all there in my archives, so you can always go back and uh, binge watch on those if you like. I'm also creating playlists, so even if you go to my home channel on YouTube, you'll notice I have a few playlists already created there, and you can click on those, and they might have like 20 videos. You click on the first one, and then each one just goes one to the next for you, so you don't even have to look around for anything. It'll be right there. So... More to come, always good things happening here. Everything's watercolors, and of course this painting is a beautiful beach scene, seascape, sand dunes, beautiful shadows. We have some hurricane fencing here with some interesting shadows and lots of weeds and interesting grasses and things. We have a gorgeous figure up here hurrying up to the beach to have a fun day at the beach here, doing some great uh, book reading or maybe some just getting some sun and going to maybe doing some surfing. So we have lots of exciting, interesting things going on in this painting. I want you to try it. Give it a go. Um, we cover every step of the way here. So this is the final painting. You'll see the final painting first, of course, and then we'll go step by step doing the sketching with the pencil. And then, of course, each step of the way of doing the painting. Okay, so have some fun here, and we'll be right back. Okay, everyone, we just saw that finished painting. Of course, we like to show the finished painting in the beginning of the video. It's always good that you kind of see uh, what our project's going to be for the week and for the... Uh, for this video and for this tutorial. So we, we like to show that in the beginning. So all of you that are maybe brand new, your first time even coming by here, welcome. Thanks for coming by. I really appreciate it. I hope you're going to stay and follow along with us here on my channel. And I always say uh, that, you know, if you if you like this video, thumbs it up. And also, too, if you uh, feel free to subscribe, the subscribe button's on the right-hand side. If you don't want to lose um, my channel, sometimes, you know, you might, if you hit subscribe, you'll always have my videos coming into your YouTube channel alerting you saying that we've made a new video so it won't be like you have to go out and search for me in the future you'll always know you have my videos and they'll be coming in to your, your uh, YouTube channel your, your own personal YouTube channel so you won't miss any videos and this way you can look at them and check out which ones you want to work on some you might want to work on some you might just want to watch and learn some of the things that we're talking about which are always watercolor techniques and methods and then some you might want to work on because you really enjoy the subject matter. This might not be your cup of tea. I'm doing a shore scene here. So maybe you don't like really painting shore scenes or the ocean or things like that. You might like flowers and still lifes or maybe figure painting or something like that. But we do all subject matter here, so you're never going to miss out. We're always going to do something you like here on my channel because I always change up my um, subject matter. So we'll do all the different subject matter, mixing it up every week. And you'll always have something within one or two or three weeks. You'll always find something you like to work on. 
but you could still watch even if you don't necessarily like a you know a subject matter like this you could still watch you're going to learn about the colors we're going to use you're going to learn how we lay out our drawing and our pencil drawing you might learn about some new brushes we use some colors we might use some different colors we're not using this painting um, so you'll learn a lot of versatile things you can use in your everyday watercolors as you work and especially if you're just starting out you're going to learn a lot of information and you just you just take it in and learn it kind of watch along listen and eventually it'll stick and you'll start to really pick up a lot of things that'll just be incorporated into your everyday paintings and your paintings will get much better so here we're going to start out and we're looking at this uh, painting you saw the finished painting so what I did is I just got some real simple shapes I got the shape of the um, dunes here the sand dunes with the grassy knoll here on the sand dune um, I have um, some fencing over here so I made just some indications with my pencil for some fencing over here like that and this is a very loose sketch I did I didn't really go with a very slow methodical drawing I kind of just went with a loose sketching in the basic shapes I need so I went with the basic shapes of the of this uh, hill up here grassy hill and knoll and then as I did that I went and did some more shapes along the bottom of the hill and sand dune and then I got some other hills over here in the, in the distance a little bit up at the top of the painting and then up here is the sky so we have about a quarter of the a quarter of this painting is, is sky and then three quarters down here is uh, sand and the dunes and then over here we just went across and we pretty much followed this across and we have our ocean distant horizon line for our ocean here and that's about the same thing about a quarter of the way down and then halfway and then a quarter in the bottom so three quarters up is our ocean so we just roughly sketch things out and we're gonna have a lot of fun today we're gonna do more of just a loose uh, approach to watercolor a very very loose approach not so much um, we're going to try to do this like painting a little quicker, less hard work, just more getting down some really beautiful washes of color and then doing some minor details as we go. So let's get right into it. We have our sketch pretty much laid out here. We have a, another, we have a log here, maybe some driftwood. There's a log here on the sand. So all of this here is sand across here. And again, the, the sand dune here with some grass and grassy knoll. And then the distant shoreline here and some more um, sand dunes up here. We have a figure up here walking. So we have a, a really fun figure up here at the top of the pathway. Walking to the beach. And uh, we have the, some rocks down here too. Some rocks over here. And let's see how this uh, works out once we get some washes on. So um, I'm probably going to use a couple brushes. Maybe I'm going to use a, a new brush. Uh, this one here is a filbert brush. So this is a really fun brush to use. Uh, it holds a lot of water. So we can do large washes here quickly. And we might use a um, maybe a smaller round brush. I'm going to see if I can find... Maybe like a number six or a number eight. Let's see what we have over here. Yeah, maybe we'll use a number six too. So we'll use a six round brush. So we'll have a round brush and a filbert brush. We'll use these two. And maybe we'll also use a uh, needlepoint brush for some fine grasses and weeds and things and fine details. So we'll have basically three brushes we're going to use a, a round filbert and a needle point and this is um, the filbert is uh, one inch and that's made by Rosemary and Company it's a squirrel brush series 41 and then we have the other round brushes uh, sable uh, this is um, Kalinsky sable hairbrush number six Raphael you can easily find this one it's got the orange tip on the end and um, this one here is the uh, Alvaro Cassignet um, needlepoint brush number eight so it's a number eight size um, 
We've been using this for many years now. As we paint on my channel, you always see I always mention the brushes we use. That's really important. That's kind of like one of the main factors. And of course, you're always going to see my colors as we paint. So we'll, I'll always mention what colors I'm using. So you have the colors, the brushes. This is Fabriano paper, extra white paper, uh, rough paper, Fabriano. And uh, that's about it. So we're going to get started and have a lot of fun here. First thing I want to do is maybe this is um, this is a a la prima painting. We're going to paint this all at one time. We're not really going to do a glazing approach. I think we'll be okay doing it that way. And uh, we'll see how it goes. We might we'll be doing some interesting washes on this one, but we're not going to strictly go a la prima and we're not going to strictly go glazing technique. We're going to kind of make this a combination of the two. So the first thing I would like to do is get some of the dark started. So we're going to go with some greens. So sap green. I like to keep a sponge next to my a small piece of sponge next to my water container. This way I can take, when I rinse my brush, I can tap off the water on the, the sponge so that I don't have too much water flooding into the palette. So basically the rule of thumb is rinse off your brush, tap it on the sponge a little bit to take some excess water off, then go over and grab our paints and mix our colors. So that's going to be our our method here and then we're going to mix some brown and green so we're going to go sap green and burnt umber so we'll get kind of an olive green a warmer green um, we're going to get some french ultramarine blue and make a darker green so we're going to have green french ultramarine blue and burnt umber Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna too, a little bit more warmer, reddish color. And then we're going to try to just get a good um, mix of colors of the greens with some of the browns and the reds in there. And we'll see how it looks, but I think it's going to look fine. Maybe we add some cerulean blue in there. Too warm and cool. We don't over mix it. We don't keep mixing and mixing. We kind of just get it mixed up a little bit. And then we're just going to start putting in some of these colors here. If you think you need more green, you just go in and get a little more green if it looks too warm and you feel like you need some more green colors like that and you can see how quick when we use this filbert brush it's got a nice curve to it so you can get those curved shapes and it also does a great job with lots of paint on there so I'm just gonna get And I'm going to go more French Ultramarine Blue, Sap Green, Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue. I'm going to leave a little bit of white sand over here, here and there. And I'm going to try to go with the flow of the hill, like that. And I rinse off the brush, tap it on the sponge, and then maybe over here I'll do a little more warmer. Burnt sienna, burnt umber, sap green in there, a little bit of blue, keep it more to the warm. Like that. Maybe we'll make this a little darker. Burnt umber, French ultramarine blue.
And while we're over here, let's do those rocks. Why not? Let's get those rocks in. And again, this filbert brush has a really fine point on it. You can see that. So you can get your relatively some good detail with that. So we'll do some rocks here. I'm going to leave all this sand, uh, white paper. I don't want to do any details in the sand right now. I just want to do this main uh, dune up here. And we'll do another, maybe a little bit lighter, a little more cooler, a little more cerulean over here in this. Cerulean blue add. And there's some more grass up here, and I, I want that more blue, so I'm going to try to make this look more in the distance. I rinse off the brush, and maybe I get a little bit of blue down here. And Sometimes if you have a hard time getting the color you want, um, you just take the color you're trying to accentuate on your section of your painting and just get that out in a different section of your palette. And this way you can really get that more of a cooler wash on there that you like. And then we'll go back to this here at the bottom, like that. And then you can infuse in some darker darks here. Brown and blue, French ultramarine blue and burnt umber it makes a really great dark. And you can add some darker darks over here. A lot of times the tops of the hills are darker. And then I'll rinse off the brush, tap all the water off on the uh, sponge. If I need to take more water off the brush, I'll use it also an additional bit of tapping on the tissue. And then I want to get over here and get some more of that green, burnt umber green, just to get a, maybe a little more of that cerulean blue. And again, if you need a little more cerulean blue or Want to change up the color a little bit? You can do that. Okay, so I do that there, and then this one, maybe even a little bit of. I'll just put a little bit of uh, blue there. Make that really light. And then go into some of the darker greens up here. Good. Maybe we use a little bit of Viridian. So I'm thinking of using some Viridian in the ocean colors. So I add it a little bit around here and there just to kind of get some of that color. And then we're going to do some ocean colors. Let's do our ocean colors now. Um, that's going to be some Viridian green. 
some French ultramarine blue. Just go across and while we're doing our hills let's do our ocean colors and then that looks pretty good we're just going to use the very very fine point of our filbert brush here to get some of those really interesting looking uh, white white uh, caps here here and there we're doing that kind of back and forth that might be good maybe i put a little more some green in there to tie in with this color over here maybe a little bit And I just wanted to make this a little more interesting, that shape there. And then while we have this paint, it's pretty, uh, there's lots of wet paint now. You can, maybe you can do a little, um, I think I'm going to turn the most of the branches and twigs and, and uh, the uh, grasses and things. I'm going to kind of spin them this way. So I'm going to pretend the wind is going this way. You have the choice. You can. You're the artist. You can make your wind going either in direction in your painting. But most times, you'll want your paint. Oh, your wind in your painting. If you want to kind of create the feeling of wind and breezes, uh, does this make sense? You would take most of all your grasses and trees and things like that. You'd have them all swaying in one direction. So when someone looks at our painting, they say, "Oh, wow. Yeah, it looks like a breezy day there." And if you're doing all of the spinning all of those small grasses and weeds and things all in the same direction that really looks good it kind of it gives it more of a feeling of the the wind and the, and the breezes more of an accurate feel for it and we could do some over here too and i'm using my needlepoint brush here just to get some indications of weeds going in the the breeze here and it's a fun day at the beach and we're just having a great time reading a book or maybe dip going swimming going surfing catching some sun rays and enjoying the, the day listening to the wind and the ocean so we kind of get into the feeling of it here Okay, not too many. I've done, you know, quite a few of these grasses and things, but I don't want to go overboard. So I want to definitely make sure I use this kind of sparingly. So you can kind of see I've added some, but I haven't continued and continued to the point where there's so many of them, then it really looks like distracting. It takes over the painting. So if you can imagine, if I do too many of these weeds and grasses, I might have even done a little too many of them, but you'll be the judge of that. When you look at the painting, when it's all done, you'll say, Ah, yes, Chris, you did add too many of those weeds. Or you might say, oh, no, that looks good. It's just the right amount. Or, you know, or you might say, oh, you could use some more even, too. I would like more of them in there. But you're the artist. You judge what you think is looking good. And But I think I have, you know, I have, you know, uh, quite a few. So I would say I might have, for my own taste, I might be thinking I added a few, many, two weeds here and grasses in this painting already. I'm kind of being critical of myself, but it's always good to be critical. Keep thinking when you're doing your paintings. Always, you know, if I take a break now and I come back, I might say, oh no, it looks good. Or I might take a break now for five or 10 minutes and come back and look and go, yeah, I did add too many of those. But I'm always thinking like that. I'm always trying to think, what did I do here? And maybe next time I won't add so many. I'll add just a few and then wait till later in the painting to maybe add a few more. So that's what details you have to be careful. Let's always learn that powerful lesson of details. Um, to be use less details in the beginning of your painting and then 
at the end of the painting, you can always add them in, but right now I can't remove these grasses and weeds and things right now because that would just be, it, it wouldn't work. It would be, you know, it would, you really can't do it. I don't know any way to really remove these grasses and weeds and things now that I've put them in. So just a good, really good tip is leave some of your details toward the end of your painting. It never hurts to do that, but definitely get some in now. The reason I'm doing them now is because you can tell I don't have to really add too much paint to my brush and I can use the paint right on the paper and it looks good that way because it's all tied in together with the top of the hill so that it is a good effect when you do it now when this is uh, wet the paint. All right let's take a break. I'm going to rinse the brushes here. Palette looks good. I haven't made too much mixes in here so we can still stick with this. I might have to clean a few areas but we'll see. But anyway let's take a break and we'll come right back and we'll start working on the shadows and the sand area here and then we'll finish up with the sky and the figure okay we'll be right back okay welcome back everybody we're having a fun time here we're in the middle of our painting <clears throat> we're actually at the point where we have the majority of the darker darks in the painting completed and we always kind of say We'll start off with the darker darks and that kind of sense, uh, sets the tempo for the rest of the painting as far as tonal values, the lights and darks of the painting. So we're really solid here. We have our hills and our ocean, the dark darks of the hills and the ocean here, the grass and weeds and things. And now we're going to start to do some shadowing along this uh, grass uh, hill here and the sand dunes. So let's start getting in some shadow, but before we put in the shadow, let's get in some warm washes, just a slight bit of washes on here, some warmer colors like maybe oranges and yellows to um, get that warmer sand feel in there. But we're going to leave lots of white paper here on this painting. So if we're doing that, let's just, uh, we're going to change our water and get fresh clean water. So now's a great time to take our palette, we'll clean up the palette. We know the colors we've been using so far, so we're not going to lose track of what colors. We're just going to keep repeating the same colors as we go. We will add a few new colors now, as you'll see. But for the most part, we want to clean up our palette, get a fresh, clean palette, ready to uh, mix some new colors. And uh, we'll get some extra spritz, a little bit of water on the paints here. And next, we're going to get fresh, clean water. So I'm going to empty my water container. And I'll add fresh, clean water to my water container. So we use different water containers. As watercolor artists, I like to use the collapsible Holbein water containers. So I get fresh, clean water. I changed the water frequently, so we did a lot of darks here. So when we were doing all these darks, we were rinsing our brush a lot. So that's why I'm changing the water out now. We want to get some really light washes on the sand. So if we were to use that muddy water, it would not work well. It would contaminate the colors we want to put on the sand, actually. It would, it would make it more difficult to get the look we're looking for. So we're going to do some alizarin crimson or rose matter. And some orange, cadmium orange. We're going to make these really light washes. I rinse off the brush, take a little bit of water off on a sponge. So we're going to make this very light and subtle. And I always say this, if you're going to add color um, in your painting that you haven't used before, you'll need to add it everywhere else in just a little bit. If just a little touch of it, that's all you might need, but you would want to definitely do that. So here you're going to see, I'm just doing a little bit of wash, some orange and some of that reddish, like that. Not everywhere we leave white paper. Then 
we're also going to infuse a little bit of purple, ultramarine violet. Let's mix up some ultramarine violet here on the bottom with quite a bit of water, like that. And we're going to add some of that to the bottom of this here for our shadows. And we might go a little darker than this. We might go over a second time. But we'll kind of start out thinking, let's get some shadow colors here. Same here. Then let's use a little more. We can go darker with our shadows. And a little bit of red. Maybe a little bit of orange too. So we can definitely go darker and maybe a little bit of French ultramarine blue in there too. So we're making kind of a we're making a darker shadow color here. So I add it up here along the sand, like that, and we add it down here. And that gives us a feeling of shadowing. And we can add another wash over the top of this to make a more a defined line. This is kind of a softer feel because we, we did wet this whole area with that sand color of the orange and the um, red, like the alizarin crimson rose matter and orange, a very light wash of that. Now when we add in some of this very, very light purple and orange mix for our shadows, the sunlight's coming this way. I forgot to mention we put our uh, shadowing. We always put our, our light insignia up here. So the light's this way. And then what we can do is we can make a darker shadow under here. And we can leave this area as the lighter shadowing area. So we can make a little darker, more defined shadow under this area here once this dries. So there we have it. We have lots of beautiful warm sand color and then some shadows with the purples. We're going to let this dry. But since we're doing that, once we're letting this dry over here in the sand area, we can do our sky wash. So for our sky wash, I'm going to just wipe up our palette a little bit. Then we're going to go with our Cerulean blue, which has a little bit of green in it. So we mix up that kind of sky wash like that. And I think we'll do a little bit. We'll That's a little bit muddy looking. So let's, again, let's keep our palette nice and clean so that we can mix the, the exact colors we want to mix here. So I want to mix a, a blue sky color like this with a little bit of that greenish color to it. More cerulean blue though. And then I want to mix a little bit of the, maybe the orange wash there too in the sky. So we'll, we'll kind of do our sky now and see how it goes, but it's going to be a very, very light sky. And I'm just going to go right around here like so. I can go right over the figure, like that. I'm going to make it a little darker up top, like up here, like that. And I go straight across like that. And that's really simple as you can get it. If you see some stuff starting to, you just blot up the issue there, like that, and let it just dry, and we'll touch that up later. 
and then we're going to take some of that orange and get, get a little bit of the orange over here, like that. And I just blot up a little bit of the water. If it's too much water there, I blot up a little bit so it doesn't affect that water line too much. So if you see any puddles of water, blot it up a little bit with the tissue or the um, paper towel. Not too much though, just get those puddle areas up. That might cause a problem. Like that. And that's it. We we'll have a good sky wash and we should add just a touch of purple to the sky. Just a little bit because we have purple below. In the shadows, we want to get some purple up in our sky, too. Okay, there we go. Now this is the time when we take another break. We let this completely dry, and we're just going to finish up with some darker darks for the shadows under this hill. We're going to add a little bit of fence posts, some uh, hurricane fences, we're going to add a, a log, like a, a driftwood log here, maybe another log over here. I think we'll need a heavier log over here, too, to kind of weight down the picture. This might look like the this hill here is floating up, in a sense. It might look like it's sort of... Uh, sometimes we have to think about composition. Sometimes if you add something very dark in your painting, up high in your painting, then it can feel like it's kind of floating off, and the picture might feel like it's kind of floating. So you need to maybe add some darks down here, and that's what we're going to do. We'll add a piece of dark driftwood here, and maybe a larger piece of, another piece of driftwood over here. It's at the bottom of the painting, dark, and a little bit larger to make it feel like everything's anchored down and solid uh, when we're looking at the picture as an overall feel. Okay, so let's take another break, and we'll come right back, and we'll sort of, pretty much we're going to be finishing up maybe, maybe two more uh, goes, and we'll be done. The next time we're going to come back after this break, we're going to do some darker shadows under here, fence pose, uh, the uh, hurricane fence uh, pickets, and uh, we'll do the um, driftwood, and I think that'll be good, and then we'll do the figure too as well. So we have a few more things to do, but we are pretty much uh, home free at this point. We have a lot done already, so uh, let's come right back. And I always mention uh, at this point in the video, if you like what you're seeing, you like how we paint here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It's as easy as that. You just click the button below here on the right-hand side, subscribe. And then you'll be subscribed to the channel, and this way you'll always get uh, alerts that um, we've made a new video. And then this way you can check it out. If you want to paint along with us at that time, you can do that. Or um, maybe you want to just watch it full, you know, one time full through, learn some new interesting things. And if you don't want to necessarily paint it, you can wait till the next video comes out. It's all up to you. You're the artist. You decide. But at least if you're subscribed, you're kind of in the uh, mix, and you're here getting a lot of great information about watercolor. We cover everything watercolor here. We do all kinds of subject matter, seascapes, landscapes, beach scenes, flowers, figures, cityscapes. We do it all, everything watercolor. So we'll be right back and we'll pretty much continue on here and kind of get the final parts of this painting completed. And it's a really fun painting. Again, kind of simple. We're using just, you know, two or three brushes and we're going through this kind of quick. We're not taking a ton of time. We're using a large brush and getting large washes on, sky washes these grassy hills here, shadows, sand. We're getting everything done quick with a large filbert brush. And then when we do our final details, um, we're going to maybe use a couple of the more smaller brushes to uh, get those final details done, and we'll be all set. So we'll see you in just a few minutes. Okay, we're back in business again, and we're just getting started. We took a quick break. We let this uh, dry just a little bit. It's still a little bit damp, but uh, it's not as, uh, you know, the, the, the washes have dried quite a bit. So, and you can see the papers buckled a little bit, maybe. You can kind of see that on the video here. The paper is buckled a little bit, and that's okay. We can work around that. Uh, not a problem. So, but the thing is, I do notice right away that our shadow under here is not dark enough. We need to go with a darker shadow. Um, so that's what we're going to do now is get that darker shadow in uh, over here, all the way through under here, over here, and then through here a little bit too. So we're going to make our shadow color 
um, thicker paint, not as much water. So let's get our ultramarine violet. That's our purple. We want to get that in. It's got to be lots of paint like that. See how that's lots of paint there. I'm going to it's got to be really dark. Before you could see it was very light. This is more dark. You can see much more pigment in the uh, the wash here. Then we're going to add a touch of blue, French ultramarine blue to that too. And then maybe some orange. We're going to try to mix up those colors. And maybe a little bit of brown, burnt umber. Okay, let's try this. And what's good about this is we have this large brush. I rinse off the brush a little bit and pick up more dark pigment like this. And that's all we have to do is just get that in there. No reason to uh, spend, I'm using the very, very point. You can see the, the point of the brush. So I can use that. The Filbert brush has a great point on it like that. So we do that. Let me get that in there like so. And it's going to dry lighter, everybody. Remember that? It's, watercolor always dries a lot lighter than it looks when you first in, put your washes in. So that's going to get lighter. And then what I'll do is I'll dampen the brush and just dampen along this edge like that. Like that. And then while it's still wet like this, you can infuse in some orange to give it a little bit of a some warm feel to it too, so it's not all cool. It kind of has that orange, you get the orange in there a little bit, just to mix in a little bit of the warm colors with the purple, which is cooler. And then over here too, we don't want to, we want to make sure we add a little bit of that orange up there too, like that. And that looks pretty good. So we got in that darker wash we needed. Before we did this darker wash, it, it did not. And now we can take some of that lighter purple and just put a little bit into the into the grass areas here, too, as well. That's definitely going to work better. It's going to look much better, but this will dry a lot lighter. You're going to see. So now we're going to um, take another break because this has to dry. But the reason I did this wash when I did was it was still a little damp. That lighter purple wash we had on there was still a little damp. We said we needed to make it darker, but we can't paint over it right away. We have to let it dry. So we let that lighter wash dry first, even though we realize we need to go darker. You let that wash dry completely 100%. You can use a blow dryer to dry it off even if you want. Then you come over the top of it with a darker wash like we just did. And then you have that problem solved where if you made a, a wash and it wasn't dark enough, you're okay. You just have to let that underwash dry first 100%. Then you take your darker wash like you saw we mixed here with lots of purple paint and pigment mixed with a little bit of orange and we got in our darker wash over the top and that looks much better now. So we're gonna we're gonna do this. Maybe it looks a little better if we put some we put a little more of a curvy curviness to that. That looks a little better maybe. That looks good. We'll see how it comes out when we're all finished. You know that's usually the final Part of our watercolor paintings are when everything dries and all the washes are completely dry 100% and all of our details are in and done, then we can look at the painting and step back and say, how does it look? Did it come out good? Or maybe not. Maybe we might say this painting is average, you know, it came out okay, but we didn't, we didn't do 
maybe we didn't have all the things turn out the way we wanted to, and that's okay too. We just take another piece of paper and start another painting. Maybe we do something different. We don't want to maybe do the same painting twice in a row because it, you know, we, we just kind of learn from this one and then we do something different and then we'll come back maybe a week or two later and try to paint this one again if if that's the case. But we got to wait to see how this dries. That's the main thing I'm trying to say here is we have to wait till everything dries, everything is good and, and dry when we're done with all the details of the painting. We have our figure in when we're done with our figure and our, our hurricane fence here. We're going to paint that in so we can see that we have to let that dry a bit before we do that. But uh, I think everything else is looking pretty good. I might take my purple wash there and just add a little purple to the to some of the ocean water here. A little bit of purple up here too. I try to add it everywhere. If I add purple in the shadows, I want to try to get that purple. And we already added it over here a little bit too. Okay, let's let this dry, this wash dry, and then we'll do our hurricane fencing, our, our figure, and I think that's about it. Maybe a few splashes here and there. And I think we'll be good. Maybe we can do some splashing now. We'll do some sand color, orange, burnt umber. Just a couple splashes for sand effect, like that. Maybe we do some blue blue splashes up here for the water. If you don't like splashing, you don't have to do it. Okay, let's take a break. We'll let this dry, the shadowing, and we'll come back and uh, finish up. All right, we are back and we're finishing up here. It's been a bit of, it's a marathon so far. <laughs> We've been actually doing a lot of work. <clears throat> but I think we're pretty much, um, we're just, ha we have a few more details to do and, and this will be finished and it's going to look really good. I already see, I used a, a blow dryer here to dry this shadow and now that shadow looks pretty good. It actually, darkening it up made a big difference before we saw how it was too light when we did our first shadow wash. And we just learned the, the most important thing was if we made something too light with our watercolor, if the wash is too light, you really have to wait till it dries 100% to go over with a darker wash unless you do it right away. So we could have went in right away and mixed more um, purple, darker, and, and did it right away when we did that lighter wash of purple. But the thing was, I wasn't sure if that lighter purple wash was going to look good or not, so I'd rather wait, and that's what we did. We waited till it dried, and when it dried, then we said, yeah, it's too light. Then we mixed up, then we mixed up the darker mix of purple with a little bit of orange and some blue even, and we did this darker shadow. And now we see that it looks much better with the wash darker, that shadow. Uh, the light's coming from here again, so it's the shadow, the cast shadow of this hill is right here. And now we're going to do a few more details. Let's do the, um, let's do some of the driftwood. So we're going to go with some burnt umber and some French ultramarine blue, some burnt sienna. We're just going to mix up some darks. And uh, what else? We're going to add some orange maybe too. Uh, some green. Let's add a little bit of green in there. We've got tons of green in the painting. Let's keep using green. And then... We're going to do just a little bit of driftwood here, like that. So that's there, and then it goes here, like that. And we'll put a shadow under here too. We'll put a shadow under this piece of driftwood. And then we're going to add even a larger bit of driftwood. So let's get our larger brush, our filbert brush, to do some of this larger driftwood over here. The thing is, let's draw it in first. So let's draw in, let's, let's kind of do it the same angle here, I think would look good, like that. Okay, so that's our next bit of driftwood there. 
So now we're going to need to add more burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, some green in there too, a little bit of orange, kind of repeating our colors over and over. And then we're just going to add that. And it's got to have a brownish color in blue. Dark, we want a dark, dark here. And we want it to be a brownish, maybe some raw umber too. All right, so we have two pieces of driftwood here. Now they're kind of like logs, you know? And uh, I could take a piece of paper towel and maybe do a little bit of lightening up on the top edge like that, where the light is. Maybe there's some reflected light down here. Like that. Maybe a couple marks on there. Maybe a few dots of color. Some knots on the wood there. And that looks pretty good. Let's let's let that be like so we'll add some shadow under there too then let's get our fence posts in our hurricane fence that tends to have some more of a reddish uh, we'll add some lizard and crimson and rose matter to our um, burnt sienna and burnt umber and we'll also remember to add some cool so let's add some cerulean blue over here too just to have a little bit of a cool mix along with our darker mixes here that we're using and not much water with this we want to go mostly mostly we're going to go straight paint and not much water at all and I'm just going to bring it like that and the same thing here we'll do another one there and then another one there so you can do a couple more, you know, they're, they're larger, closest to us, they're larger. And then now, as we go further in the distance over here, we're going to have to shift over to our um, our needlepoint brush because these get, these get thinner now over here. The uh, fence picket fence the picket fences here and then as we go this way we make them smaller we add a little bit of the blue there too and we make them smaller like that they get closer together too like that and that's all we want something for an effect here if we make them smaller in size as they go this way, as well as we make them thinner as they go, that is really the key, those two ingredients. And that'll give us the feeling like they're trailing into the distance here. We're having a fun time. We kind of feel like we can walk into the scene here and walk along here and then maybe come up that pathway up top here. Maybe we can walk by over here too. So we leave a little bit of space over here. Kind of thinking about the viewer that's going to view the painting. We try to maybe square off these top edges here. Looks a little better. And we'll add some shadows to these too. And this is where I don't get too bogged down with getting worried about do I add more details or I'm going to add, okay, the, sh the light's coming from this way and the shadows are all going this way. So let's remember that with our, that's all we have to do. And we can do our shadows with our needlepoint brush. This way we can control how they look a little better. And as with 
cast shadows there. They're darker at the bottom, and then they get lighter as they go further away from the. So they're a little bit darker here. And we just remember they need to all be on the same angle. And they're, the, the, the shadows are pretty, and then over here we're not too concerned, we're just kind of, like that, there we go. Then we do a little wire mixture of white wire is going to be a grayish color so we mix up all our colors like that maybe we dry off the brush a little bit with uh, tissue so we don't have too much paint on there we want to make that wire really thin like this like that a little thicker over here And then we have a little bit of that shadow there for the wire. That's good. So we're not go going too overboard with details. We're just getting in what we need to. Let's get our figure in. Our figure should be kind of a lighter shade. It's further away. Our figure's kind of... Let's do our figure very... Maybe um, some blue, cobalt blue maybe, a little bit of cobalt blue, make this kind of a blue. All the rest of this paint's dry, so I don't have to worry too much. And then maybe uh, some gold, orange, but kind of, you know, mixed in, not too bright, not too intense of color. It's distant colors here. That's all, a little bit of color. And a little bit of shadow too. We have to have some shadow there. A little darker at the there, like that. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so we have all the details in right now. I think we have everything we wanted to uh, get completed, finished. Um, we have the figure completed. Um, we have the hurricane fence here with shadows. That's good. We need a little bit of shadowing under the uh, driftwood here, the uh, logs. So let's get a little more shadow, purpley shadow here. Let's just do that. And the same thing here. All right, I think that looks good, maybe some green.
sap green. For some more, just a few more weeds here. There might be a few more weeds. That's why I say we added them all up here. We might as well add a few more down here. These down here are going to be much, you know, sort of larger because we have we have uh, a few here. And you can see I just spin my brush like that to the left. Like that. Just to the left. Just like that. That's it. All right, so everything's completed here. We have a really fun painting we did. We didn't take tremendous amounts of time doing this, and it is really, we have a lot of good details here. Um, what else can we do? Maybe we can add a, a few more details. Let's see. Let's use some titanium white. Titanium white in a tube. And then what we do is we take a little bit of yellow ochre. And we add a little bit of that yellow ochre to the top of the paint in the tube just to mix it around a little bit so you have a little bit of that warm white look. So not quite straight titanium white paint, but a little bit of that yellow ochre in there. And let's just do a couple... And if we add a few of those little bits of white like that, that really goes a long way. It makes everything look much more like sunlight in the picture. Um, we can add another bit of light here, maybe some light there. Uh, maybe up here on the figure we could add some light to the top of the shoulders of the figure here. Like that. We can take a little bit of that white, go into our palette, just make sure we have a good spot where there's not too much color. Add a little bit of water to that. Thin it down just a little bit, but you can still see it's that warm white color. And maybe just a few a couple of that there wouldn't be light. That might be a few. There might be a few little bits of weeds that you could put there. Just a few. Not too many. And, and that is fine. Okay. All right. I'm glad everyone stopped by on this video to watch, to paint. We're having a great time here. Let's keep coming back week after week, month after month, and year after year. And pretty soon you're going to be painting paintings like this every day. It'll be simple for you because you're just using the same methods and techniques over and over and over again. And there's, there was nothing too uh, intricate about doing this painting. We just basically worked as we went very carefully, um, getting in our major darks first and then our shadowing next. And then we did our lighter washes last with some details and then a little bit of some highlights on a few things uh, with some titanium white with yellow ochre mixed in there and you have a wonderful painting like this and it's just uh, we're ready to put it in a frame. Okay, so frame your paintings that you do that come out really well. Put them in a frame, put a mat around them, put a frame, put it up on the wall, have a great time. Celebrate your victories. Uh, when you get a really good painting, make sure you put those in the frames. The other ones that don't turn out great, no problem. Put them in a folder, you save them, and they're always good uh, keepsakes and for memories and you'll remember what you learned from each painting that you did. And that's just all it is, is just keep practicing and you'll have a, a great time of doing watercolor. So we'll see you on the next video, everyone. And again, thanks so much for uh, stopping by and painting with us and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.